which guitars did y'all use when you recorded? Were y'all using your own, or did you mostly you kind of use studio stuff? Or I don't remember mm. exactly, but the the tone I've always liked the tone of this album. The guitar tones in it are uh, a little different than a lot of other albums from that time, and I'm, I'm sure that's credit to Matt Goldman. I forget. Do you remember what guitar you recorded with? Because we were playing those Fenders for a long time. Yeah, so, yeah, just the, uh, I think that song, I remember using those strats, the finished strats, and um, there, he had a guitar that he, ha- it was, a, I'm trying to remember what kind of guitar it was. I think it was a strat too, but he had it wired. So, like, if you had a 12-string guitar, but you had, you know, it's where it's got the higher strings, the smaller strings. Right. He, he had that guitar tuned with the smaller strings, like more of a, and I don't know what the right word would be to, to mm. say, but like a, I guess like a tenor guitar kind right. of deal. And uh, which you see a lot of baritone guitars, but I don't know if you ever see a tenor guitar. But uh, so it had that almost, what's that song? Um, remember that song, that Kiss Me song that was real popular? You know, I'm not going to sing it. It was like a girly <laughs> kind of real popular, like in all the love story movies. Um, but it had that yeah. sound to it. And like I remember... Resistance? Cover Six, of it? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. Yeah, so that I remember playing a part on here, which you can't really. If you're listening for it, you could hear it, but um, there's a certain. I think it's that walk down part when it gets real slow. Right. I remember playing that and thinking uh, it was it, it is just something that adds to the song, you know. And that's what I loved about Matt Goldman too. He would he would uh, hear little things like that to add in, kind of like seasoning food. You know, you don't even yeah. realize something's in there but it makes the whole dish better. Yeah. I know I played a couple different bases, but they just, cause he hit Matt's suggestions of this song would sound better with this one. And this will sound better. Um, he, I don't think I used mine at all. Although one of the ones I know I used in the studio, he had the exact same bass that I had, which was a fender. It was a JP 90, which I, to this day, never seen more than like three of those ever. And he had one in the studio that I used, a white one, where I had a black one. Um, and I missed that guitar. I took that guitar all over the country, and then it ended up getting stolen. <laughs> it's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, it, I had a church, and somebody came in one morning before church started. The doors were unlocked. Somebody walked in, just grabbed stuff off stages, and left, and took my bass. Man. Yep. <clears throat> no idea where it went. Wow. It was, you know, old and beat up and not worth anything, but, uh, you know, sentimental value. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you remember this, but then some kid, some kid gave you a music man while we were on tour. Yeah. I, well, I used it for a couple, a couple of tours, I think, and get sent it back. But yeah, he was like, here, play this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, <laughs> You're we're, you're gonna let us drive away with this? <laughs> yeah, it was, sure. it was it was brand spanking new too when brand uh, new. when he when he let Ben borrow that or gave it to him or whatever it was. Yeah, that was weird. Man, all the just all the blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> on that base when you gave it back. Just get DNA. Sweat. <laughs> it's sweat. <laughs> He got it back. He's like, gross. <laughs> right. Where was that? Um, was that New York? I think so. Wow. I can't remember exactly. I can't remember exactly either. Do you Do you remember, I mean, you don't have to say a last name. Do you remember a first name or anything for the guy? I've tried to think of that. I can't, I don't, I don't remember. But I don't, I don't remember a lot of names. The names are, names are like the thing that I don't remember. Yeah. It's one of the things where when I hear you say it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, but I can't. I can remember visually more than I can, you know, names. I can kind of picture what the guy looked like. You guys remember, um, I know we're kind of, this is a little, little tangent, but we played a show in Virginia Beach. Um, and there was a kid there. We were playing those fenders and he wanted, I think I was playing the blue one. And he just, he wanted it so bad. And he, he's like, look, I'll trade you this SG, this Gibson. <laughs> and I was like, I had never, 
I didn't really know what an SG, like, you know, how it sounded or anything. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Cause we had a few of those, like we had like, what, like four guitars on tour with four of the same strats. Yeah. It's like, okay. And I just kind of put it in the trailer and forgot about it until we got back to Florida. And man, when I plugged that, plugged that SG in, played that, I was like, oh, this is, this is what I got to be playing on. That SG was. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty much all I remember you playing really is the SG. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I started with, I had those strats and you were yeah. playing on one of my strats. I had the, um, I had like an all black one. And then you had that like weird, like cream green color. The, the pearl. Yeah. It was like a yeah, pearl yeah. white. Yeah. yeah. And then I had a blue one that was just like, they're all set up. They're all custom. So they're all set up the same. I had that a blue one that I didn't use much because I really liked the black one, but I traded that blue one. And, uh, it was just like one of the backup guitars, but um, I mean it's a nice guitar. But that SG was man, I love that SG. So that Pearl Strat, where is that? I would love to own that Strat. If you can ever, if you can remember or ever find out where that is, yeah, let me know. That that was like one of the best. Yeah, that was that was a good guitar. Yeah, I mean we had some really nice guitars that we did play with. Um, some really nice guitars. So you still have any of them? I don't have those. I have later guitars. So like even that SG, I sold it. I it was it was a sixty four SG. Wow. And uh, so when I stopped touring with Farewell, um, I just checked. You know how hey how much is this worth? Because I need. You sure that guy traded you and you or he wasn't like, hey, if you want to look at this guitar, I'll hold your guitar while you're looking at my nice like '64 Gibson SG, and then and then we just drove off. I mean, <laughs> you sure that's not how that went. I guess we'll find out if he listens to this podcast. He's been like trying to find us for all these years. And this was Virginia Beach. Yep, Virginia Beach. So if you're in Virginia Beach and listening, and uh, you traded me a Strat for an SG and you want your SG back, uh, sorry. Well, I guess we'll have to have a. Another conversation later. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a nice strat, though. It was a very nice strat. Yeah, it was, <laughs> but not near as nice as that SG. Well, you know, the SG. I don't think he understood what he had in the SG. You know, like because he was not impressed with it. Yeah, you know, and you. I don't think you were were sure either at that time. Like, uh, yeah, said, I didn't know anything. I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know how good an SG was. I know I did. I wasn't comfortable with the Les Paul because they were so heavy. I was yeah, like, eh, I don't really like Les Pauls. They're too heavy, so I wasn't impressed with Gibson stuff. But yeah, I didn't even play that SG the the rest of that tour. It just sat in the trailer the whole time. But so, uh, what do you play now? Do you have like a? I have a newer SG, and then I have two Les Pauls. Uh, one though is like a stripped down version. It's you know still got the same contoured body, but it doesn't have the six pounds of paint so it's fairly light and then i have another one that is like the you know the traditional like sunburst one um signed by uh billy gibbons of uh from zz top cool so i don't i don't i don't play that one and then i, I do have a uh music man uh bass uh, i have chad's bass i i got that from him whenever we stopped touring with farewell i was like no you can't sell this I already lost too many things to being broke and having to sell stuff. So, hmm. so I love, I would love to go after and try to get Joel's drums back, you know, like, yeah, get all that stuff and, you know, sentimental value. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that again. I know we talked about that before, but I don't know what I would do with those drums <laughs> if I had them, but I would love to have them. Yeah. yeah. You know, for all the weird things that I do and don't remember, I guarantee you one thing I could still do is set Joel's drums up the way he liked them, for one. And one of my jobs for setting everything up was taping, putting like a whole roll of duct tape to tape them to the floor so they didn't move around when he played like a wild animal. Yeah. And, uh, but I could also, to this day, probably pack the trailer exactly to make everything fit the way it had to fit inside the trailer. <laughs> you know, if one thing was out of place, it wouldn't, the door wouldn't close, but I, I bet I could still do that. I did yeah. it so many times. <laughs> all right. Challenge accepted. We're going to get all the same gear. <laughs> you get all the gear back and I'll show you how it fits in the trailer. All right. We'll do it. So if, if so if I plan to move anytime soon, no, no. It would be <laughs> <laughs> that is not it. Then he's a Tetris champ. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had to have uh, 
several rolls of duct tape at any given time to, to keep Joel stationary. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that, that was that was a tangent. You know, just while we're talking about getting <laughs> random instruments on the road. Uh-huh. I think there was another one. Uh, oh no, Joel left his snare in Philadelphia one night. We were playing a show. It was supposed to be for that booking agent, um, the girl who booked Hot Water Music and stuff. And she showed up, but she couldn't stick around because we were playing later. And uh, when we left, Joel didn't he didn't pack his snare in his, uh, his snare case. Wow. So, man, I don't, I yeah, I don't remember, remember that. that. Was that you said that was in Philadelphia? I remember we played. Well, so we're getting way ahead of ourselves now. But um, what was the venue called in? Philadelphia that we played at. Uh, what was that? What was her name too? I remember her. Eva. Eva. Yeah. Um, and she's with Feta Booking, and she did yeah. hot water music. I think she still books bands. That's what I was wanting to say, Feta, but that just didn't sound right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you remember? What that venue was we played? I mean, it was like what just a block or two away down from the from the harbor there. Yeah. Um, if I said the Firebird, that might sound too generic, but. No, something like that. Huh. Do you remember at that show? For some reason, I don't know if they were pushing us to get on stage or what, but we um, it was time for us to get on stage. And the, the stage was pretty high up. I remember that, but um, yeah. but I remember getting up there. We were ready to go, and for some reason, at the last minute, Joel had everything set up. But for some reason, at the last minute, I don't know if it was something he ate, but he's like, "Man, I got to go to the bathroom." <laughs> And there was a bathroom just off the side of the venue, like oh, the main floor there. You could see the door to the bathroom. Yeah. And Joel was in the bathroom, you know, the doors locked, everything. But we're on stage. And I remember at that venue, you know, through the mic, like talking to Joel, like, come on, we're ready to play, man. You know, <laughs> all, all, you know, I got a lot of like, uh, when it hits, it hits, man. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of those stories about with Joel. So. <laughs> Um, yes definitely that's awesome all right so last week on the the last episode we we ended i don't i don't think we talked about it a whole lot but we ended with uh, august the 19th 2000 and we ended in montgomery alabama at creation fest do you remember anything about that show at all besides it being like extremely hot and we were all in black uh well it's funny because just looking at the facebook page there's one photo of us playing at that show um yeah i saw that um let's see like you're kind of like staring at the sun like directly into the sun for some reason um Uh, was it like a campground or something where it was at like a gravel lot or something where they put a stage up is that i'm thinking of something different no, I, I think it, it's something something about like that. I'm wearing a purple shirt, and uh, yeah, so all three of you. Are, I got black pants on, dark purple shirt, and all of you guys are like all in black. And yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, you can see how hot it is in that picture. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like David's eyes are crossed. <laughs> about to pass out. Joel's back there in the shade. So yeah, this, so that's he's that. probably doing the most most physical work of all of us. So. That's that guitar too. Yep. And I would love to have that guitar. Man, what are you playing through over there? That black strat. No, that what amp is that? I don't know. I was wondering the same thing. That's the bass amp. That was uh oh. the one uh Matt had, I think. Was that the oh, old well, not 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 the one right there beside Chris, but the oh, one that. that's a um Fender like, four ten DeVille. DeVille, yeah, okay. I had that before I got that um, Marshall half stack. Okay. And that was a good, I wish I had that amp. Man, we were. All right. I'm going to have to go buy one of those. Dadgummit. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, I've never looked at this picture this close up before. I like the stage aesthetics. You know, you got like monitors, water bottles, a ladder. <laughs> yeah. Ladder, a window. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's back, like behind all of the amps. Like he's like, there's. Oh, what a weird setup! 
Yeah, you can see the duct tape I was talking about on his drums on these pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, down here at the bottom, yeah, I see that. Man, that's crazy. It's cool. What amp is that you're using, David? Is that that? Is a, yeah, that's my fifty one. Well, you know that actually, though, I don't think that was my fifty one fifty right there because mine's got all the writing, all the all the letters and everything on it. I don't yeah. know. I don't know whose that was. It looks like a fifty one fifty though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It could be mine, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't remember anything about anything about that show except for just being miserably hot. <laughs> uh, we should have wore shorts. So uh, being back in Montgomery at Creation Fest, I'm, I'm, looks like we basically hung around, hung out in Alabama after that because uh, there was Faith's prom party, gra graduation party. Yeah. And, um, and then practice, 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 practice. And then we had a show in Columbus, Georgia on the 25th at Christ Community Church. Was that the one with Beanbag? What is it with you and Beanbag, man? Like, I just, <laughs> you, you, know say, you say that about every show. Is that the one with Beanbag? <laughs> 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 but, you know, you are right. This is the one with Beanbag. Ah, yes. see? Yes. I know something sometimes. Yes. So you still talk to those guys? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't talk to me then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? They just kind of like, you know, looked at us and like, uh, <laughs> okay, good talk. See y'all. Well, they, they were probably just tired, you know, because they were from Australia. They were probably just... Uh, oh, that's <laughs> who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> not, okay. not, a, not a real beanbag. <laughs> 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 I don't remember that name at all. I do remember guys from Australia being at. <laughs> when he said they were from Australia, it all clicked with Ben. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's been there searching for like two minutes. He's been so quiet. Going, when did we play on Beanbag? <laughs> That's yeah. Okay, Australia. <laughs> you should have led with that. <laughs> <laughs> you say something like you know that band from Australia. Beanbag. I like I don't like things to slowly come out. You know, just little pieces <laughs> at a time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Bury the lead. So this and this looks like us too, where we're you know we practiced that whole week and uh, then played the show, which was a local show here for us for for me and Ben and um, at Christ Community Church, and then. Uh, we played the next day, that Saturday, in Opelika, Alabama, which was at uh, a Salvation Army. I, I remember, do remember playing there, but I don't know if I remember this show because I think we played there a couple of times. But um, and I, I don't believe that this. that was with um, Sharon. She was friends with Matt, but anyway, she she ran. I don't know if she ran the Opelika Salvation Army store or, and they just you know let her do shows there. I'm not really sure how that worked, worked out, but uh, somehow, I don't, I don't know. Maybe she, they just let her use the building. I'm not real sure what that was, but uh, I know that we, we did a few shows there. Do y'all remember playing that of Salvation Army at all? I like vaguely, but I, I can't picture it in my head. So it, it, it would have been a storefront building in the downtown Opelika, right? There's, there's also some railroad tracks, right? Like right there. There's a parking lot, of course, and then the railroad tracks. And they like they literally pushed all the racks and clothes and shelves like against the wall, and we, uh, you know, had cleared out an area in the store. Did they? Yeah, I remember. I remember stuff being kind of pushed in a corner, like all the racks being kind of pushed to the side, or in in one area. It was like there was an open area, and then there was some stuff kind of crammed that you could tell that when they were not having shows, they kind of slid that out into the floor area. Wow. So you got so you guys, you know, I work for Goodwill, right? And so maybe I need to ask Goodwill if we could do like a. Uh, <laughs> a tour like a goodwill <laughs> circuit <laughs> to goodwill and waffle houses man do we, <laughs> we've got like our year cut out for us we're gonna be busy <laughs> let's see could you imagine like for real <laughs> like how, how that would be so that 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 week of practicing would have been at donna's house right that would have been in the uh 
in the little house behind Donna's, but that that was before anything was done to it, correct? It was just yeah. Wooden... So is that where we practiced in the little house? Yep. Yeah, I'm trying well, to remember. Yeah, because yeah, that's right. Because me and Faith weren't married yet, so yeah, we would have practiced there. Built that house basically. Okay. Wow. I don't remember us practicing out there. I mean, we practiced there all the time. Wow. And Joel, that's where we would we used to stay in there until they got that uh, little RV that was parked out of the side. Then we slept in the RV, but we still practiced in that little house. Hmm. That's right. I kind of remember that. Yeah, that's crazy. And then, let's see, after we played Opelika, I mean, this was still a local show for us. Um, then we I'm had sure two we, more days off? Yeah, two more days off. So we hung around there. Um, what is... Then it says Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. On a Tuesday, two hundred dollars on a Tuesday. Wow, that was good. I don't remember that show at all. Pensacola. You know, I remember. I, I want to say it was that show. It might, might, maybe it's not. But I remember being inside some building, and it was like there. They didn't have air conditioning in there. I thought that might have been in Tallahassee, but maybe that was Pensacola. But yeah, it was like so hot inside. That seems like a lot of shows have that memory. You know what? You're right. That was that was Tallahassee. Pensacola, same thing. <laughs> Close enough. Pensacola, Tallahassee. Yeah. No, that was Tallahassee. That's because that's where Kelly and Leah were in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's what's in Pensacola? I don't know. I've, I've played shows in Pensacola, but I can't remember them. So that pretty much ends that tour in August. Uh, we ended up, so Pensacola, and then the next day we went back to Lakeland. Joel had to be home for something. So what's after August? September? <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Usually. But 2000, though, I'm not sure. Yeah, mo- most of the time, yeah, 2000, yeah, the whole Y2K thing. Things were crazy back then. <laughs> A different world so that's so that same week i see that so we we're in lakeland and then we played the lakeland florida epicenter i don't know what that is man we played a lot of different places in lakeland yeah i have no idea what that is either so and, and a lot of it a lot of these shows too we were we were kind of um you know, we were just playing whatever we could play. And uh, a lot of it ended up being like, you know, back and forth at first there between Lakeland, Sebring, Gainesville, and uh, Columbus, Georgia, and Opelika, you know, just because we had a lot of support in both of those areas. And um, I think we were, we were still writing that album. We didn't really spend a lot of time writing that. Um, I had three songs coming into it. I think you had a couple. And then yeah. we wrote about, what four or five songs together and then um went and recorded so but yeah i don't remember this show in lakeland florida at the epicenter i'm not even sure what that is yeah me either we've played churches there we played a record store where they you know kind of similar to the salvation army thing they had to like just move racks out of the way tim though the guy who did that greenhouse show he he we did a few different things for him, and he always he he did pretty good for us. Okay, yeah, I bet this I, I bet this was probably. Now that you said that, I, I do remember playing something that he had put on for us. So I, that's probably what that was. I'm intrigued by what the next day says. <laughs> it's Christian. Christian, oh, I know this one. Ranch Christian Adventure Ranch in Ocala, Florida. Yeah, uh, I remember that. This is this is the hookup from Chris. This is somewhere Chris. This is a connection Chris had. I remember that. Yeah, no, this is a guy. He like did these events out on his ranch, <clears throat> but you had to play acoustic, and um, you know, like he would he'd like do a little preaching and you'd play some music. You know, you'd just be up on some stools, and uh, it was mostly like you know, hey, if you want to make a you know couple hundred bucks and and uh, you know, kind of. Every time I, I've been there like three times and every time we went, like it's never the same kids. I don't know if they were like, um, like troubled kids or, or whatever that he brought there, but 
yeah, it was an interesting spot. He had like some animals and were they there of their own free will? I don't. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah, I, I would. I would. Uh, I would hope. Hope. Yeah, that was the case. okay. Okay. Because I do. We did. I know we did remember. I do remember playing a place one time that was kind of like a a teen halfway house kind of place, like a camp or something, wasn't it? Yeah, David, that, you, that, that, that was in that was in Texas. Was it? Yeah, I would say there's one of those in Texas too, like Tyler, Texas, or something. Christian Adventure Ranch, oh, Ocala, so Florida. I do not remember that at all. I, I, re- I remember. I, I just remember it was just different. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it was just. It was on our way up to. Um, well, no, it wasn't it? I guess. Well, no. Let's see, so that was in Ocala. I'm not sure where Ocala is in reference to. Uh, it's just south of Gainesville. Okay. Okay. So the few days of practice after that, would have that have been at Joel's or yeah, at, that would have been at Joel's? Yeah, yeah, in his garage. Yeah, the fourth, fifth, and sixth at Joel's, and then we played DIY with Stalemate. I do remember Stalemate. I, I want to say we played with those guys a few times um, at um, Murray Hill Theater, and so was DIY was was that wasn't that in Jacksonville, Orlando. Orlando. Okay. Yep. That's the show we we talked about it last week, but that's the one where we played that uh, peace of mind song yep. for the first time. And then the show after that, that's when we played that is called revolution. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's, I remember Matt Goldman coming out to that show to basically see what he was getting himself, himself into, you know, for yeah. recording. Do you remember that at all? Um, I remember that show. I remember because, you know, um, at the time I was friends with Jay Baker. And yeah. That was his church. And I okay. think Dennis and Mars was on that show as well. Um, yep. I remember that. And there was a local band called Some Soviet Station. And uh, they're a very math rock band. And, and I was like, man, these guys are really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, re- I remember that show. I don't remember Matt being there. but. Um, yeah, he showed up. But he he just kind of wanted to see, I guess the what our sound was live, so he could kind of help. Yeah, bring that out in a recording. I remember him saying that. Yeah, that's cool. And then looks like we went to with Slacker after that. Oh yeah, another trend. Then, after. was that Slacker show? That was probably one that uh, Chris showed up and played at. Yeah, that was 2000. So, yeah. Yep. Maybe that. So, 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 we're in Atlanta at the Revolution and then uh, all the way to Myrtle Beach. Did that show. Yeah, Chris from Dashboard Confessional played that show. And then, and we have video out there on our YouTube channel of that. And then, straight from Myrtle Beach back to Atlanta. And we started recording through it all. Uh, that was from, looks like we started on the 11th of September all the way through the 20th of September. So so that's what, you know, because this calendar, you know, it says Columbus, Georgia, but this is when we were in Atlanta recording. Right, because what that, so on the 12th. Oh. All right, that's that's just for the 12th. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so what we so what we did, we we, we set up in the studio on the 11th and and uh, we got everything set up, unloaded, ready to start the recording. And, and we had already told Matt ahead of time, hey, we do have a show on the 12th, but he let us come in early and set everything up. And then on the twelfth, we drove down to Columbus, Georgia, and um, well, take that back. That that couldn't have happened that way. But I don't know why it says started on the eleventh because we could, we wouldn't have unloaded anything because we had to take everything back down to. Yeah. Um. But I don't I don't think we could use our amps at that show because it was at, at that. You know, I'm going to say this. It sounds like we. We play at the Civic Center, but I remember it was an outside show. They had a, a stage yep. set up outside, but they already had, I think, amps that we that to use. So I don't think we used our own amps or something. I don't remember. I remember I playing care. that show. I don't remember what we used, but I remember playing that show. Yeah. And you're like, and, why don't we just play inside? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with a band called Sonic Flood. Yeah. Do you remember that band at all? They're they're they yeah they were like a big like. CCM, okay, and I remember the name, but I don't. I don't remember anything about them. I couldn't tell you what they, what songs they 
have or anything. I want to say that it's one that what was that the um oh, the band was called Delirious. And when they were first starting too, and I think they were like the like opener for Sonic Flood. I want to I want to say that, that that's what that show was. Let's see. So we spent that so we came back to Atlanta that that day. I remember it's kind of hectic, you know, that week. Um because we we had been on on tour, even though we were at Joel's house for a few days, then we did you know Orlando to Atlanta to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and then back to Atlanta, back to Columbus, and then back to Atlanta again. You know, with when we recorded, you know, he, did, he did drums for the first two three days, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Drums, so you may not have even needed to unload. You know, you may have used your guitars and amps yeah we did scratch tracks and drums and then then uh you jumped in there right ben yeah there was about 45 minutes where we did just all the bass stuff real quick <laughs> I <went home. laughs> then i went back to the house like all right see you <laughs> so ben, ben doesn't know that we re- recorded all his parts does he <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping you would <laughs> All right, let's try this thing while we're in tune now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no. It probably did take you about 45 minutes to do all this. I mean, you know, one, one take Ben, that's what we used to call you. So. Yeah. Hey, when you're perfect, you can't really get much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's one way to say it. I don't remember going to Gigi's after we recorded. I thought we just drove home. We had to have coffee, man. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't long know. Way to go. Long way to get go to get coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't remember they're playing again either. But I mean, the calendar says we did. Hmm. Not a whole lot of stuff here. Not until we get into October. But so um, yeah. We, so after we recorded that album, looks like we drove all the way back down to Gainesville and played DG's Coffee House again. And then um, spent some time either in Gainesville or in Lakeland. I'm not sure where there. And then we played in Birmingham on uh, September 29th at the, it just says Church of God. You know, that actually, that may be, I think that's where we played with 238 was that show. I'm pretty sure. But I'm not, yeah. I, I don't know. Which one's the the Church of God in Birmingham? Um, Man, I don't remember I don't, that that venue. Yeah, I don't either. No, we did play a church in Birmingham with Saga Twenty Four Seven one time. That was, but I think that was when we were kind of playing several shows in a row with them. If I remember right, I don't remember. I, mean, hmm. I don't remember that at all. And then the next day, it's, it just says, I don't know what that means, but it says, power play, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's Chris made his move that day. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know. What does that mean, power play? Uh, Was it like a note that you put in there after the fact? You know what Chris, Chris tried power play? Like, right? <laughs> oh, Chris did his thing. He, he made a power play. Made power play. Is that what that says, power play? It says power play, and it's got Chris in parentheses. Like, like that maybe was a nickname for Chris. <laughs> yeah, it says power play. No, not sure. I don't know what that means. We got to watch out for Chris and his power plays. It's kind of a chopped up month. I mean, there's like a lot of stuff. You know, practice, practice, DIY, blah, 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 recording. It's weird to have that. You go all the way to Gainesville to play DGs, and then there's nothing on a Saturday. Because probably Joel had to be back on Sunday. Then there's nothing, nothing, nothing in Birmingham. I'm pretty sure we were pretty wore out, too. I think maybe you and Joel just played uh, Gainesville. That would have been weird. Yeah, no, I know. I don't, I don't understand it either after recording. And then we went all yeah. the way to, get to Gainesville. And then you, we dropped Joel off. And then we're back to Birmingham, I mean, without any shows in between there. So there, there may have been some other stuff. That just wasn't on this calendar, too. Yeah. I do remember driving home from Atlanta um, because Joel had already left. Yeah, Joel and I 
came back to Columbus. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Probably, you know, y'all still, y'all were still recording for like three more days after we came back. Yeah. And cause I remember driving back down to, to Sebring, Lake Placid, just in, in the big band by myself, listening to just the rough mix of what Matt did and be like, man, he really, <laughs> this engineer is something else. Yeah. So, so do you do you remember much even just about that whole process of being in the studio there at that was so that was glow in the dark studios and that was with Matt Goldman and yeah uh, I remember a lot about being there I remember uh, just all the different ways that he would set up microphones I remember Joel you know telling him how how his snare drum had to be and Matt's like you know you're tightening it too tight Joel's like no no I want it to sound like this like this. And then Matt finally took his drum away and, and did it himself. And it's like, there, this is what you're looking for. And Joel's like, oh, yeah, that's it. And um, Matt, I mean, Matt is a drummer at, yeah, know, at, at heart. Very good he, drummer. Yeah. Uh, I remember him just, we, we were just doing like all these things for me. It was like so experimental. He was like, here, do this. And then like on certain lyrics, like don't say the whole word, like end it, like end it short. And then, you know, but when you mix it, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. That, that that's really cool how that turned out yeah he was kind of like i was like watching a wizard to me i just remember sitting on the couch for hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> <laughs> i've never enjoyed the never enjoyed the recording process that's never been my favorite thing yeah so how did we uh, i mean how did we end up at glow in the dark studios with matt did we was that something that we had heard from another band or, I mean, or did, I know we were on Screaming Giant Records, you know, at this time too with Kendall. And is this a, a, a studio that Kendall had suggested no. or how did we end up at with Matt? So my hotelier guys uh, recorded their first album with him. And when I was talking to Travis from my hotel here, I was like, yeah, you know, we're going to record. And he's like, oh, you need to go to the guy we went to, this guy, Matt. So he put us in contact. So then I went to Kendall and was like, hey, we want to record this album with this guy. And, uh, you know, like we need, you know, like how, how does this work? Because I didn't know how this worked with the label. And he's like, oh, you have $3,000 to to make the record. So, okay. <clears throat> so I talked to Matt. It's like, hey, yeah, the record label is going to take care of this. It's like, they said it's gonna be three thousand dollars, and I don't know like all like the the exact back and forth about getting that set up. But you know, it was like okay. And Kendall and him had to have talked at some point, but uh, yeah. So it was it was on Travis from My Hotelier's reference um, because their album sounded really good, and I was like, whoever did this did a really good job. Let's let's go do that. Yeah, that's cool. Now, now, when my hotelier recorded with Matt, did they do it here at Glow in the Dark Studios, or was it but, before he? I don't think he it? had a place then. I think he brought all of his equipment to like one of their guys because uh, a couple of them lived up around Atlanta at the time at like one of their basements or something, and they just they did it in one of their houses. Yeah. Okay. That what uh, what album was that? The uh... Uh, composition of ending and phrasing. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. That was an awesome album. Yeah. You ever talk to those guys anyway? I talked to Mike, the drummer, uh, here and there. When I was out in Washington, Travis had moved out to Washington. I talked to him a couple times. Um, I I've run into the other guys, you know, when I was in Orlando. Uh, Ryan, I ran into him like once or twice, uh, Patrick, who was their drummer after the fact, after Mike, um, I actually, we, we grew up in the, the same town, but, uh, I've seen him a couple of times. He's got a bunch of other bands. Um, I think all those guys are really playing Travis. He was doing another band. Like he had a punk band out in Washington. Ryan has a band called copper bones. Uh, Patrick does like a lot of stuff. Um, I think the one was like Sick Dogs. Uh, it's one like P P A O, and then he's played with a bunch of other people. But yeah, I think all those guys are doing something. So, but, so at the studio at Glow in the Dark when we were there, um, I know we, we 
All, so just to paint a picture for anybody listening, Glow in the Dark was basically two rooms. Well, and a bathroom. So you yeah. had the control room, which was a uh, little bigger than a, a walk-in closet. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Pretty decent size walk-in closet. And um, and then he had the uh, the open room where you know he would do drums. He had pieces of like like boards with material, you know, for acoustic. Uh, what do you call that? <laughs> um, what do you what do you call that? The, the acoustic, just the yeah, like like acoustic paneling and stuff. Acoustic paneling, yeah, and um, but it was just a big open room, and he could kind of manip- manipulate the room with those panels and. Uh, um, we but we I remember we, the whole time we were recording we slept there too. I mean that was, yeah. We would record for maybe would you say eight hours, twelve hours? We record as long as he would go. Yeah, and then it was weird, you know, because there was no windows, so we would like, uh, like we wouldn't know what time of day it was. Yeah. So, you know, Eventually, be like, oh, hey, he'd be like, hey, let's go get some dinner. I, I actually remember being there and like, I don't know if we have money for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think he took us out to eat one time. I was like, I got you guys. It's cool. I, I, it was so it was right there in uh, Little Five Points in Atlanta, right around the corner from. Oh man! Uh, so there was, was it Little Five Points Pizza? Is that what was yeah. it? Police, the police station or something too? Like. Right I don't there, connected and then uh, it was really close to um the junk man's daughter is that right yeah you know what it was called it's been a while it's been a man it's been a long time close to uh the vortex restaurant uh kind of hamburger place is that right man you guys got me on that i don't remember anything that was right around there I, I thought, yeah, he was here in Tennessee. Um, so if you had to go back and do the recording again, uh, what would you have done different? And we'll talk about it more, too, because we'll go through some of those other songs. Yeah. Um, like, uh, probably, like I said earlier, I, I would write write more, like put more into lyrics, and uh, especially on things like where... Uh, you know, like next song on the album, right, was um, What Can I Do? Like, we probably should have wrote like a second verse to that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, just it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It like is. three times or something. But. Yeah. You know, four, five. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know, it is what it is, right? Probably just stuff like that. Um, we met you in June and then we finally, after talking back and forth, you know, did the started, we combined everything by August and we went on the road in August and then five weeks later, maybe we're in the studio. You know what I mean? So um, I don't, I don't know why we rushed that so much to, to be in the studio right then. Um, because really, maybe we maybe we were just trying to do it while uh, Screaming Giant was ready to pay, you know, willing to pay. I don't know. I don't know, but um, it, we we I think going back, I would say probably would have been better to push it out, maybe a couple, at least another week, <laughs> yeah. but uh, a few weeks, a few months. Yeah. Um, but uh, but at the same time, I don't, we wouldn't have got what we've got. It would have been something different. And I'm happy with what we got. Not that it's less. I'm sorry. That? That? that was my computer. Ah. <laughs> Your computer sounds possessed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know what I mean? Like it, it, you, that, that's just what being creative and doing something creative is, is it is that, that, that it is what it is. And um, I don't, I don't, uh, if we would have waited, a month, two months later, it, would, it just would have been something different. And I'm, I'm 
happy with what we got out of it. So, and yeah, then, I'm, I'm very happy with, with the album. You know, like I said, I, I think that it's always the thing that you would, you know, yeah. a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, I'd go back, I'd do this different, I'd tweak this, but. There, yeah, and I mean, there, there's a few things that haunt me on this album, and it's not anything to do with the recording or with Matt or anybody in the band. It's just it's things that for myself that I'm like, man, I wish I would have done that different. But, um, but you know, it is what it is, and uh, I'm still happy with the whole album. So, yeah. And we'll talk about those other songs later. I mean, there, there's, you know, we're just, so you know, we're gonna do this next album a lot different. <laughs> well we did you know that's what we did for this one that this album that's coming up right we we took a lot of time to really yeah t- we pushed this one off the most years. the most time so yeah <laughs> <laughs> still working on lyrics for those yeah 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 no, I, music's been done for 19 years 